All right. Bang, bang, Bubs gang. How you doing? Um, Christelle Bubbling. Some of you know me, some of you don't. I'm not new to the YouTubes. I've had this channel for six years, but I am incredibly brilliant and incredibly lazy. So I put things up periodically. Like two weeks ago, I put up a video called My Secret Chain. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Now, I've gotten myself some equipment and I'm going to try to do better and be more timely and put more videos up. But I make no promises because I'm just keeping it real. So what you have embarked on or clicked on this time is my first vlog in like summer forever. Okay, my inspiration behind this vlog is that at this moment tonight, well, when I tape this, not when you're going to see it, because of course, watch at your leisure. They are showing Purple Rain at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Hollywood Forever? But whatever. So it's a cemetery. They've got a huge lawn and they have people come. Questlove is DJing. But none of my friends invited me. Yeah. No matter though, I set up my equipment and I decided to play. Hence this colorful wig because I just twisted my hair down and I don't think that's like very conducive for a vlog. No self-hate but I just threw them in there real quick so I kind of look like an avatar slash Yu-Gi-Oh character. I don't know what's going on. So I said I'm gonna play tonight and I'm gonna set up my equipment and set up my camera and set up my lights. See what it looks like. The light is like a lot harsh right here. It's not so much over here because I was too lazy to set up the second one. But okay, it's fine. You will live. We will go. My first topic in my series of consistent vlog topics is going to be my worst first date. Not my worst date ever, but my worst first date. But actually, I think this might be my worst date ever. Here it goes. So I do extra work and Ooh, maybe I shouldn't say that because he might like see this and then he'll know it's him. Fuck him. Anyway, so I do extra work and I was working on this show. Oh, it was a good one too. I do extra work and I was working on a show and I met this dude and we kind of like, we were chopping it up like extras do. You're in holding for hours at a time. God, the synthetic wig is hot. You're in holding for hours at a time. So you just talk, you make friends. We exchanged numbers. We talk, we text a couple times because I'm a texter. I, I like texting, guys. You want to text me? I let your girl slide on in them DMs. I don't mind a text. Anyway, um, so we text back and forth for a little while. And he finally asked me out. So I'm like, great, let's go out. Finally, a date in L.A. Woo! So, uh, of course, he asked me, well, what you want to do, which I really hate, but I'll do another vlog about that later on. And I tried to get him to set up a plan, but he couldn't come up with one. And I was just like kind of suggesting stuff. Let's go to City Walk. There's a lot of restaurants, little things to do there. Okay, fine. And let's, maybe we'll go to Jillian's and we can bowl or something. Oh, he's like, all right, cool, fine. So we do that. We meet up. Because he might be a serial killer, so he can't know where I live and pick me up for the first date. That's not going down. So I meet him there. We go to Jillian's, and I find out he can't pick me up because he doesn't have a car. Okay, before you, like, set off the shallow alarms. I'm not shallow. L.A. is a huge, uh, big city. So if you're trying to date somebody that doesn't have a car and our public transportation is kind of shitty too, like really half-assed, it can be difficult. So it's a little, maybe not a red flag, but like a little alarm, right? Like your iPhone alarm, like beep, beep, beep. It's like that. It's a little alarm, not a flag, an alarm. All right. So we get to uh, Jillian's. We're going to go bowling, right? And uh, you know me, <laughs> I'm a lady. So of course, I don't reach for my purse. When we get there, they ask us what we want to bowl, right? So he says, we're going to bowl one game. One game. Now, I don't know about you. 
But all the times I used to go bowling in college, I worked at a bowling alley. Usually when people do a game of bowling, they do like three frames and then it's best two out of three who had the highest score, right? One game of bowling is actually 10 frames, just one round. Him, me, him, me, him, me, him, me, him, me. End of the game, right? So then usually if you go bowling with your friends, you do that two more times, and then whoever had the highest average score or whatever, you total it up, or best two out of three, however you do it, but it's usually like two, three games, right? We bowled one. Not two. One. And so I'm like, okay, because it's expensive out here, the economy is not the greatest, and we both do extra work, so I know we ain't he ain't balling, right? So, but I'm not tripping. I'm not tripping. But then we gotta get the shoes. He's like, all right, all right, size, size ten. So it's, oh, what what size do you need? Size ten. All right, bang. You know, he pays for the bowling, pays for the game. You got to pay for it up front because that's just how they roll. And then he says, I'm going to go to the restroom. He goes to the restroom. I go to the lane and I change my shoes. He went to the restroom to change his shoes because it turned out he had a hole in his socks. I don't even care about the hole in your socks. Let's ball. So we ball, right? And we actually, we had a good time. We were talking. We were joking. I was talking junk about how I was going to beat him. And I think I may have beaten him by a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, my, I'm a ringer because my mom used to bowl all the time. <laughs> so I got the skills in my heart. <laughs> all right. So after, so after we finished bowling, we walked around a little while. And then we went to have drinks at a restaurant. We'll call it. Gorst Fump. I'll let you figure that out. Gorst Fump. And it was happy hour. So drinks were like five, four or five bucks, right? They were having like a deal or whatever. So I had one drink. One drink. He had one drink. And he was ready to go. That was it. We was out. The total was $9.75. Bill came. My man put $10 down. I was like, okay. He put $10 down on the $9.75. When they bring the bill back, he's going to put the little tip on. We gonna be out. Don't you know, when they brought that bill back, my man scraped up that quarter, put it in his pocket, and looked at me like, you ready? Sure. So it just got really interesting to me because on uh, the ride to the train station, like that's where you park if you kind of like want to park for free, take the little tram down to the train station. And of course he was going to the train station because like I said, he ain't had no car. Um, so we were talking and I guess we, we started talking about like kind of our friends and having people come over and hang out. And he was telling me about how he had one friend who wound up letting people come over his house and like graffiti his apartment. And he felt like he couldn't let them come and visit him because they would disrespect his place too, which is valid. Um, and then he was telling me about his friend that he had helped out when he was down on his luck and he needed a place to stay. So he let his friend stay with him and he had these like little snack cakes that he really loves. And when he goes to the grocery store, he always buys these snack cakes and he, you know, just keeps in the refrigerator from when he gets off of work. He wants to come home. He chills out with his little drink and his little snack cake. And he told his friend that was staying with him, like, you can have anything else in the refrigerator or the house or whatever. Just don't touch my snack cakes. Show sure enough, he came home one night and... His friend, who he let stay with him, and he warned him about those snack cakes, had eaten the damn snack cakes. Okay. So, now he's mad, right? And he's like, I cussed that motherfucker out, and I kicked him out of my house. I mean, what kind of friend does that type of shit? I'm looking out for you, and you gonna eat my snack cake after I told you not to eat my snack cake? He was like, people are just crazy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just kind of sitting there like, no, I don't know what you're saying. If, 
if I asked my friend not to eat my snack cake and they were staying with me, my friends wouldn't eat my snack cake. So I don't, I don't know. Well, the date was kind of off. was Was not good. All right, and uh, maybe this is misleading. My worst first date, but what happened after was the terrible part for me. So after the first date, I had gone out of town for a wedding. We kept in touch while I was out of town. And you know, when I got back, he wanted to get up again. And I was like, all right, cool. Well, you know, what do you have planned? Cause as I mentioned, I'm like a man with a plan. But of course he was like, well, I don't know what you want to do. <sighs> Fine. I, I mean, I, I had nothing and he suggests well, you know, why don't you come over here and kick it with me? And I'm just like, bruh, I've only known you exist on this earth for like three weeks. I don't know you. I'm not coming to your house. You could be a serial killer. You could be a rapist. You could just talk too damn much. I don't know. I'm not going to your house. And then he was like, okay, 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 boo. I understand. I understand. You're not comfortable yet. So I'll tell you what. Why not come over there and kick it with you? Which, when you translate that into broke, it means I ain't got no money to take you out. So, I'm going to come over to your house, put my butt print in your couch, soak up your AC, drink up all your drink, eat your snack cakes, and then you will never get taken out again. <laughs> and I understand funds being tight. Lord knows my funds have been tight many times. Especially, LA is expensive as shit. But again, I've only known you exist on this planet for three weeks. You can't come over my house. You, you, you're not going to kill me in my own house. Know what I'm saying? So then he says, oh, I see. You a gold digger. I'm, I'm not trying to be broke messing with you. What? I mean, you just want to Take, 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 and not give anything. Oh. Uh, uh, but. Now, mind you, this will be our second date. Second date, and he's already calling me a gold digger. And I was like, you know, I was trying to be cool about it. And I was like, listen, I understand things are tight. Things are tight for everybody. Things are tight for me, too. Maybe we're just not in a position to be dating right now. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we just... Financially, we ain't got it. And I said, we, we, me and you to soften the blow. Like French, we. And he said, oh, I got money. Bitch, no, you don't. You just said you need to come over my house. You just called me a gold digger for not want you to come over my house to say, maybe let's go to a movie or something. Like, we could have gone to a matinee. We could have gone to this $3 movie. I asked you to make a plan so you didn't have to worry about it. But you know what? That's a whole nother video. But anyway, that was my worst date. The dude called me a gold digger after our first date. <sighs> so yeah, apparently uh, I'm a gold digger. And uh, yeah, that was my worst first date. And I would like to hear yours. I mean, because even though mine wasn't like a holy abomination, I still cringe when I think about it. And you know, sometimes I see that dude when I do do extra work now, and thankfully he doesn't remember me because I always wear a different wig. So let me know your worst first date. You can leave it in the comments. You can send it to me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, even Snapchat me. It's all Chris Bubbling. Bang, bang, bubs, gang. <laughs>